modern-day enchantments, here's the truth behind Thor's magical weapons. You might already know this, but the God of Thunder goes back way further than their Marvel Comics debut in 1962, and so does his thunderous hammer. Mjolnir got its origin story in the 13th century prose Edda, and like most Norse mythology, it involves Loki causing trouble. In this case, he made a wager with a pair of dwarves named Brokir and Sindri. You may know them from the 2018 game God of War, betting that they couldn't craft three magical items that were the equal of Asgard's three greatest treasures. To rise to the challenge, the blacksmithing dwarves set about working their forge and, despite Loki's interference, they crafted a trio of treasures of their own. The most well-known, of course, was Mjolnir, which turned out to be a pretty good hammer. As powerful as it was, Mjolnir wasn't Thor's only piece of equipment in the myths. To heft the incredibly heavy hammer, a problem that he had to face long before Marvel Comics came along, he had to use another pair of magic items. The first was Yarn Grape here, a pair of gauntlets known as the Iron Grippers, and the second was the Megingjord, a belt that doubled his already considerable strength. We just got to load Tony's old Hulkbuster armor, prototype for Cap's new shield, and the Megging, the Meg, the Thor's magic belt. Over the years, Marvel has added or adapted most of the mythological stories behind the Norse gods, so it's not surprising that both of those items exist in the comics. However, the Megingjord shows up rarely on the page, and to explain why Thor doesn't just wear it all the time to double his strength, Marvel's version, according to Thor number 363, takes a pretty serious toll on the God of Thunder. Marvel's version of Mjolnir first appeared in Journey into Mystery number 83, loaded up with a few interesting spells to make for more exciting superhero comic stories. The first, of course, was the familiar enchantment by Odin that meant only the worthy could lift it. Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power. For the other, though, it seems like the Marvel masterminds may have been taking some inspiration from a lightning-powered hero who was a little more recent than the prose Edda. In the golden age of comics, young Billy Batson discovered a wizard in a cave and said the magic word Shazam to transform with a thunderous blast into Captain Marvel, the world's mightiest mortal. He even shared his power with a sidekick, Captain Marvel Jr., whose secret identity was Freddie Freeman, a young man whose injured leg led him to walk with a crutch. Captain Marvel stopped being published in the 50s, though he would eventually come back as DC Shazam, renamed for various legal reasons. Fans might have found an interesting alternative in 1962, though. Marvel's version of Thor was secretly Don Blake, a doctor whose injured leg led him to walk with a cane. He discovered a stout stick in a cave, and when he smacked it against the ground, it turned into Mjolnir and transformed him with a thunderous blast into Thor, the world's mightiest immortal. Blake was then blessed with the strength and power of Thor. Whether the Marvel bullpen was actually trying to recapture the magic of Captain Marvel adventures by giving it some sort of hot Viking flavor is certainly up for debate. Marvel's most enduring addition to the Mjolnir mythos was the enchantment that granted the power of Thor to those who were worthy of it. Anyone who was worthy of it. Over the years, that's a list that has included a surprising number of names, but the more notable examples include Steve Rogers, who first hefted the hammer when he was operating as the Captain, and later lifted it in his more familiar identity of Captain America. Assemble. Squirrel Girl also got her hands on the hammer and used it to stop a misguided duplicate of herself who couldn't lift the hammer from beating up the Marvel Universe. The most eye-catching for crossover fans, however, came at the climax of JLA slash Avengers, when Superman charged into battle wielding both Captain America's shield and Thor's hammer to save the day. Once the battle was over, however, Superman found himself unable to lift it, leading Thor to explain that Odin occasionally sees fit to suspend the enchantment for special occasions. In 1983, Walt Simonson took over as the writer and artist of Thor with number 337, and he certainly brought in plenty of new ideas. The first big shift? Ditching the Thunder God's human identity and making the new Thor a space horse. Okay, it's slightly more complicated than that. While investigating something in space, Thor encounters an alien warrior named Beta Ray Bill. In the fight, Thor loses his hammer, and thanks to yet another enchantment that required him to keep in contact with it to maintain his godly form, it turns back into Blake's walking stick. 
A very frustrated Bill grabs the stick and smacks it against the wall, and readers suddenly learned that this strange new alien who definitely seemed like a bad guy is every bit as worthy as the guy with his name on the cover. Bill transformed into a new sci-fi Thor and was promptly whisked off to Asgard because Odin's summoning spell was looking for Thor, not his son. Over the next few issues, Bill has to battle to the death against Thor to determine who would be the true god of thunder, which, if we're being honest here, is some pretty rough parenting from Odin the All-Father. In the end, though, Bill ended up saving Thor's life and proving himself to be a good and noble soul who just happened to look like a giant skeletal horse. Bill swore his loyalty to Thor as his oath brother and to reward his nobility. Odin and Eitri the Dwarf craft a new hammer to be Mjolnir's equal. Stormbreaker. It was every bit as strong, had the same enchantment about worthiness, and the only big difference came in the aesthetics. Stormbreaker, while made of the same Uru metal as Mjolnir, appeared golden and had one flat hammer head and an axe-like blade on the other side. Beta Ray Bill isn't the only strange transformation that Thor underwent during Walt Simonson's five-year run. At one point in the comics, Thor found himself turned into a frog thanks to Let's say it all together now, Loki. While he was a frog, he got caught in a secret of Nim-style war between New York City's frogs and the ravenous sewer rat population that was being controlled by a bad guy with low aspirations called the Piper. The whole issue was built around a struggle for Thor to recover his hammer, and when he did, he struck it against the ground and was thunderously transformed into a six-foot-six-inch frog dressed like Thor. That's not the end of the frog story, though. While he was briefly amphibious, Thor spent some time hanging out with a frog named Puddlegold, who turned out was also a human transformed into a frog, because that's the kind of thing that happens when you're living in a universe full of wizards. At one point, however, Puddlegold found a shard of Mjolnir that was chipped off by one of Thor's chariot-pulling goats. Puddlegold lifted the shard, struck it against the ground, and became Throg, the Frog of Thunder. Unlike Thor's time as the Thunder Frog, Throg was still frog-sized, with a tiny Mjolnir to match. This hammer had all the abilities of the regular version and was thus given the extremely on-the-nose name of frog -Yolnir. In 2014, Thor came to the conclusion that he was no longer worthy to wield Mjolnir and that the lack of confidence became a self-fulfilling prophecy. While Thor was being glum about this turn of events and getting his left arm chopped off by Malekith the Dark Elf in a pretty disastrous attempt at hammerless crime-fighting, Jane Foster, believing that there must always be a god of thunder to stand against evil, hefted the hammer herself and became the mighty Thor. For the next three years, Jane was Thor, but her tenure as the goddess of thunder came to a crashing end when Mjolnir itself was destroyed. It happened during a battle with the Mangog, a creature that had come into being in a past era when Odin destroyed an entire planet, and the pure hatred of its population coalesced into a nearly unstoppable monster. The key word there, however, is nearly. Jane did end up stopping the Mangog by chaining him to Mjolnir and hurling it into the heart of the sun. As you may know from science, the core of the sun is roughly 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit and contains a constant nuclear reaction. That turns out to be about the level of force you need in order to destroy a presumably unbreakable magic hammer. Mjolnir was vaporized, Jane retired from Thoring, and the Odin son once again took up his heroic exploits, using a series of substitute hammers crafted by a dwarf named Screwbeard. Sadly, due to a shortage of the mystical Uru metal from which the original Mjolnir had been crafted, none of the replacements were as good as the genuine article. Mjolnir may have been destroyed forever, but this is comics. It's only a matter of time before everyone comes back from the dead, including hammers. In this case, it happened during 2019's War of the Realms, a crossover event that, shockingly, was not Loki's fault. Instead, it's Malekith again, leading an invasion of Midgard, or as we call it, Earth, from the United Forces of the Other Realms. At the climax of the story, Thor conjures up the god Tempest, a storm so powerful that it affects the sun itself, reforging Mjolnir and sending it crashing back to Earth. The reborn Mjolnir was pretty recognizable as the original, with the exception of the handle. This incarnation had a handle made of braided, natural-looking wood, 
presumably to bring it more into line visually with the version of Stormbreaker that movie-going audiences would have seen in Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. It also retained the worthiness enchantment, but Thor now saw worthiness as a struggle that we all face to be better, declaring himself, along with his new hammer, to be the god of the unworthy. While they're easily the most notable ones, Mjolnir and Stormbreaker are far from the only Asgardian weapons to show up on the page. Most of the weapons that originated in mythological sources are present in the world of comics, like Odin's spear, Gungnir, and Heimdall's magic sword, Hofund. Plus, there's Gram, the sword of the dragon slayer Sigmund, Levatine, Loki's sword whose name has the amazing translation of Damage Twig. Others, however, are unique to the comics. Before he proved himself worthy of Mjolnir, Thor used a fearsome axe named Yarnbjorn, or Iron Bear. Is that a dragon fan? It is. My god. It's the famed sword of Alka. Dragon Fang, which appeared on the screen in Thor Ragnarok, is the sword carried by Brunhilda the Valkyrie, so named because it was literally carved from a dragon's tooth. Before he got his hands on a couple of assault rifles, Scourge the Executioner was fond of using the Blood Axe to behead his enemies, and its violent name is pretty self-explanatory. There are other hammers, too. Loki once crafted a Mjolnir-like bludgeon named Stormcaster that he gave to the X-Men's resident weather-controlling goddess Storm. Eric Masterson briefly took on the identity of Thor while the actual god was banished, and when the Odin son returned, Eric became a hero named Thunderstrike, wielding a magic mace of the same name. Most recently, Jane Foster took up a mystical Asgardian artifact named Underyarn, the all-weapon, which can transform into any weapon that Jane required in her new job as a Valkyrie. Oh, and the Asgardian name? Fittingly enough, for a weapon unique to the comics page, it translates loosely to Marvelous Weapon.